in the last lecture we had uh, talked about the need for quantum computing and what makes this uh, upcoming new uh, principle of quantum computing that exciting. We also talked about what is the scope of this short course of 20 hours that we will have. The very basic of quantum uh, computing requires that we must have a good idea about the basic postulates of quantum mechanics as well as a reasonable exposure to the uh, linear algebra. Now what I will do in this and the next lecture will be to talk about the basic postulates which is basically the philosophy on which the principle of quantum mechanics is based and I will also take you through the essential linear algebra that is required for understanding this course and following it. So what we do is this that uh, there are nothing like a postulate numbers which are sacrosanct but these numberings are entirely mine. So the first postulate of quantum mechanics is the physical states are represented by rays in Hilbert space which I represent by the script H and these uh, vectors in the Hilbert space are known as kets. So let me explain what is this ray and talk a little bit about what is a Hilbert space. Now an Hilbert, a Hilbert space is a normed vector space in which the concept of an inner product is defined. Usually uh, this space is in finite dimensional and it has another property that the space is complete in the sense it is closed. Uh, however, in quantum computing we normally deal with finite vector spaces as, as a result of which the closedness or the completeness of the vector space is automatically satisfied. The inner product as we will see is very much like a scalar product of two vectors with some minor differences which I will point out and uh, the concept of a norm that is a length essentially is defined in this space. So this is an abstract vector space in which we define uh, vectors or the vectors represent the physical states of the system. Accepting that uh, we, we will represent first these states by this symbol due to Dirac, this is called a ket and so ket psi is the, a vector standing for a physical system in this space. Now the uh, corresponding to this space corresponding to this space, this I said is called a ket. There is uh, uh, a dual space which is written like this and, and this symbol is called bra by Dirac. As you can see that bra and ket are two components of bracket which is what would complete this situation. So we define an inner product between two vectors in the Hilbert space. Let us call uh, one of them the ket to be phi and the another bra to be psi and the product of psi phi, we will see what is the minor difference between a scalar product and this one is uh, the inner product defined in this space. Now the second point is that the if you look at the inner product of the bra corresponding to SI with the vector psi itself, now this is greater than or equal to 0 and uh, the it becomes 0 only when ket psi is a null vector. The other uh, point that is there with that is that this space is linear. It is a linear vector space. Now in the sense 
that if you take the inner product of let us say psi with a phi 1 plus b phi 2, what you get is a times inner product of phi psi phi 1 plus b times the inner product of psi phi 2. So, that makes it a linear vector space. Now, supposing I look at a quantity like psi phi okay, psi phi star that psi phi star is equal to phi psi. Then uh, and so therefore, we can normalize the whole thing because psi psi is always real and it is conventional and we will see why to take this psi psi to be equal to 1. This is called a normalization. There are certain inequalities satisfied in this. One of them is known as the Schwartz inequality and the Schwartz inequality is I have just stated it for your for the completeness of this lecture. We will actually not be requiring it so far as this course is concerned. So, we have defined a linear vector space. I have called it an abstract space known as the Hilbert space and we also defined as a, its dual. Now, in the first slide, I made a statement that the physical systems are represented by a ray in the vector space. Now, this is because in reality or in practice, there is no difference between a state C psi and psi, where C is a general complex number. Now, as a result, C psi and psi represent the same uh, physical state and so therefore, instead of a physical system being represented by a particular vector in the Hilbert space, it is represented by a one dimensional subspace of the uh, Hilbert space for which any multiplication of the vector psi gives me the same represents the same physical state. So, this is what is meant by uh, a ray. Let us suppose I have a basis in this vector space and uh, let me say that this space is spanned by uh, the vectors which have suppose it is a d dimensional vector space. I have spanned it by this cats e n. So, that any arbitrary vector can be written as a linear combination of this basis with the coefficients being uh, alpha n and remember that the difference between a normal vector space and uh, this space that I am talking about is our space, space is over a field of complex numbers and so therefore, all my numbers could be complex. So, these alpha n are in general complex. Like we do in an ordinary vector space, I can choose this basis to be orthonormal. So, if I choose the basis to be orthonormal, then I can take the definition of the basis as E m E n pro inner product to be equal to delta m n. And so, therefore, if you take this basis in terms of that it is trivial to see that alpha n's are given by the inner product of E n with psi. Now, I go over now to uh, what is popularly known as the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics. Copenhagen as you know uh, is a place in Europe where in the uh, days when the quantum mechanics was being developed uh, late 19th century to early 20th century lots of physicists had gathered there and they had been responsible for formulating quantum mechanics and get or uh, discuss its philosophical interpretation. And this interpretation of quantum mechanics which is considered as the standard interpretation is uh, known as the Copenhagen interpretation. Now, according to Copenhagen interpretation, the uh, state vector which I have said is a ray psi, uh, it has only a probabilistic interpretation. Now, we will as we go along we will realize this is a rather important point 
that the uh, when we are talking about for instance a physical system and suppose you want to make a measurement of that system when i say we want to make a measurement of that system i could be trying to measure for instance its energy its angular momentum or whatever physical property you feel like now so therefore if i want to make a measurement of this system represented by a ket psi the best i can predict is that what is the probability with which i will get a certain result this we will see caused a lot of philosophical disagreement and one of the prime opponent of this interpretation was none other than albert einstein who never believed that the copenhagen interpretation is correct we will have occasion to discuss einstein's objections to this through this course so uh, so as we said it has a probabilistic interpretation now let me then uh, go over from totally abstract uh, statements that we have been making to something to which you can relate now it turns out that l l any vector can be given a matrix representation now that is fairly simple because even if you take an ordinary vector in three dimension now an ordinary vector in three dimension is completely specified by giving three numbers these are for instance they could be its x y z component r theta phi components or whatever you feel like now so therefore this set of three numbers for a three dimensional vector decides or defines my vector what is the difference in this case number 1 is the dimensionality could be arbitrary n though we will be mostly talking about lower dimensions finite dimensions the other difference is that this set of numbers are in general complex numbers so therefore i can represent my ket psi by a column vector which is essentially a n by 1 matrix of having complex elements so that's what is shown here so psi vector psi i have represented by a column vector having components c1 up to cn now what about the dual space the dual space then would be written now there is a difference here dual space corresponding to the psi that i have written down is instead of being a column vector is a row vector but the components of the row vector are complex conjugate of the components of the ket vector so instead of the uh, column vector c1 c2 etc that we have written down uh, you can see in the slide that it is given by c1 star c2 star now what is then the difference between the inner product or the scalar product for an ordinary vector space and this say remember if i had an ordinary vector space uh, let us suppose a vector with component a and a, another vector with components b1 b2 b3 uh, then i'll write down the scalar product of these vectors as a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3 in this case it is very similar excepting that the left hand quantity which actually is in a dual space is to be written as sum over n phi n star psi n that is take the complex conjugate of the components of the ket vector phi so that is the only difference and with this i can carry out the algebra uh, in terms of the matrix is only and matrix manipulation becomes much easier now with this let me go to the second postulate of quantum mechanics now we have already defined the vector space now we also need to define operators in that vector space because it is the operations that we will do in a vector space which will take us from one vector to another so look at the second of the, the uh, uh, postulate and this says we have certain observables what is an observable as i mentioned 
that an observable could be things like a position, momentum, energy, etc. Whatever you would like to measure, a property of the particle. Now, these are represented by the adjective is linear self adjoint operators in the same Hilbert space. So, basically, an operator acting on a given vector of the Hilbert space gives us or takes into another vector in the same space. So, this is uh, written in this slide as A psi, the operator A acting on psi gives me a vector phi. Now, can I do the corresponding linear operator in the brass space? The answer is yes. Here is a vector operator B which acts to its left on a vector in the dual space giving me another vector in the same dual space. So, the uh, relationship is identical. Now, the next point is these operators that we are talking about are linear operators. Now, linear operators as you have learnt earlier, what does it actually mean? A linear operator means that an operator A acting on a linear superposition of two vectors. Let us suppose it acts on alpha psi plus beta phi. Alpha and beta are complex numbers. Now, this simply gives us alpha times a psi plus beta times a phi. So, this is this is what a linearity of an operator means. Now, in this space, I define an operator called an identity operator. What does an identity operator do? An identity operator acting on any state vector psi gives me the same vector. It does not do anything actually. The point that is to be noted here is that these operators though they are associated in the sense if you add A with B plus C or add A plus B with C their result is the same. But these operators in general do not commute. So, these operators A and B. So, in general A B commutated which is as def defined as A times B minus B times A is in general not equal to not equal to an identity. Now, suppose there exists corresponding to an operator A. Supposing there exists corresponding to the operator A another operator B such that a times b is equal to b times a is equal to i the identity. Then b is called inverse of a and is represented as b inverse. So, this this is the operator relations. Now, since we deal with a slightly different form of the inner product that is our inner products are with respect to a ket vector and a bra vector. We define a an adjoint of an operator. The adjoint of an operator is defined in the following way. That is suppose I take the inner product or scalar product of phi with let us say a vector a acting on psi. Now, this is then identical to the scalar product of the adjoint of A which is usually represented by A with a sign like this very similar to plus, but it is written with a long stem which is called a A dagger. A dagger phi its scalar product with psi. Now, you, it is very trivial because of this when when an operator comes from this side to this side you just that operator changes to its dagger ok. And as a result you can immediately see that if you take it twice a dagger dagger that gives you a itself ok and, and a trivial proof is shown in the slide. Now, one class of operators 
which are going to be extremely important for our discussion. These are the operators which represent physical variables. Every physical variable in the Hilbert space ha is represented by an operator which are known as self adjoint operator or also called Hermitian operator. So, the Hermitian operators have this property that a dagger that is adjoint of a is a itself. I will give you the matrix representation of these things and then we will realize how it is fairly easy to understand these in terms of matrices. Now, since we said that an operator acting on a vector gives me another vector in the same space, a general representation of an operator could be of the form that it is a cat followed by a bra. Now, this order is very important and you can see why that if this quantity a cat followed by a bra acts on let us say any state let us call it psi. So, you notice that beta psi is a scalar product and hence it is a number. So, I get a number times this alpha. So, this is equal to some c times alpha and we have said that alpha and c times alpha have no different physical significance. So, this is so a general representation of an operator is to write a ket followed by a bra. Now, as I told you that it is much easier to handle the linear algebra by means of representation of the vectors by a set of numbers or in the form of a vector being represented by a column matrix. Now, since most of our discussion will take place in two dimensions for reason to be uh, understood later, most of my examples will be in two dimensions. Uh, and, a, and a complex vector place a space in n dimension is usually represented by C n of which our important space is usually C 2. So, one of the basis you can immediately see in C 2 is for example, 1 0 and 0 1. Any, any vector in this space can be written as a complex number times the first one plus another complex number times the second one this is obvious. Now, this is not a unique representation. For instance, I could also have a basis in which I have 1 1 and 1 minus 1. The difference is of course, that while these two vectors are automatically normalized, these two vectors are not. You can easily normalize them by putting 1 over square root of this square plus this square which just happens to be 1 over square root of 2. Now, supposing you want to go to the space C 3, then my vectors could be 1 0 0, 0 1 0 and 0 0 1 and, and like this you can write down for any dimension the basis. Now, let us look at then that what happens to an operator. Now, remember I told you that the general representation of an operator is like this cat followed by a bra. So, if a cat is represented by a column vector and bra is represented by a row vector, this form is essentially what is known as a matrix direct product. So, if this is for example, a column vector having two elements, this is a row vector having two elements, this product will then become a 2 by 2 matrix. So, take for example, a matrix A, I am just writing down an arbitrary matrix. So, this matrix is 1 plus 2 i minus 5 i 3 i and 4. 
Now, what is its A? What is its adjoint? Now, in order to find the adjoint, what you have to do is take the transpose of the matrix that is interchange its row and order uh, columns and having done that take the complex conjugate of the elements. So, this will then become that in place of 1 plus 2 i, I will get a 1 minus 2 i, 4 of course will remain 4 because these are diagonal elements. So, transposition have no effect on them, but because of transposition minus 5 i would have come here, but then when I take the complex conjugate this becomes a 5 i, 3 i would have gone there, but because of complex conjugation this becomes minus 3 i. So, this is the adjoint of A. Now, as you can see that this adjoint of A is not equal to A itself, but supposing you are to look at a matrix like this, just giving you another example. So, let us call it instead of A, let us call it B. Supposing we write it 3, 2 minus i, minus 3 i, 2 plus i, 0, 1 minus i, 3 i, 1 plus i, 0. You can observe some symmetry which is there. Then this matrix and its adjoint are the same. In other words, this is a Hermitian matrix. So, we will continue with the uh, matrix representation of linear operators. So, what we have said so far is if A and B happen to be vectors in the Hilbert space of dimension D, then Ket A followed by A bra B has the dimension D by D, okay, and the matrix product here is known as either a Kronecker product or a direct matrix product. 